Hey there guys and welcome to my complete Grand Exchange Merchanting Guide. Um, before I start I just want to say thanks for the feedback about the video. I uh, was asking whether to make it one or two videos long and the general idea was that people preferred the idea of one long video that they could listen to. However two videos meant you could be able to find things a bit easier. So I tried to cater to everyone's needs and wants so if you check the video description you'll be able to find examples that might say uh, 2 minutes 30, how to find items, uh, 15 minutes 17, how to invest in items and you can just check the description, find these sections which interest you and then just watch those if you want to. Now this video is quite long and it is one of those which you can just have on in the background and listen to if you want. There will be some annotations on screen which you would miss if you did that, however I'm only emphasising points or saying things that aren't that important I just forgot to mention. So, you know, if you want to watch it, you can. However, if you prefer just to listen to it and listen to what I'm doing, then you can also have it as one of those minimised videos. Now, this video is going to contain the basics of merchanting, what merchanting is, how to find items, how to find the prices of items to buy, how to flip, how to invest, and also what bulk purchasing is. It will range from pretty much no previous experience to complicated markets using small and large cash piles and it will also have examples of me flipping with the live commentary like I said and also some investments that I've done in the past and investments that you'll be able to do in the future. So that's it for the introduction. I will also add there is lots of great hand drawn diagrams like the one you're seeing now which took me like two minutes and they're always good to laugh at my poor drawing attempts but apart from that I hope you enjoy the video I hope you learn something from it and any feedback from this is greatly appreciated as I did put a lot of effort into it so that's it for the introduction and time to go into the actual video now to start the video I'm gonna just answer the simple question of what is merchanting now if you don't know, merchanting is just the process of buying and selling an item. You buy it at one price and then hopefully sell it on at a higher price so you make a profit. The profit obviously being the difference in the two prices. Now there are many ways you can merchant. One is what you can see on screen now which is going to a popular world such as World 2 and trying to buy items and sell them in trades. However, as that for new merchants can be a bit risky given some items aren't worth the trade price you can lose money out there to a lot of people that are scammers and try and put you into a false sense about an item's price so for that reason we are going to focus just on the grand exchange merchanting and that is the place where I've made all my money anyway so I'm pretty sure that you can also use that place to make money so just for the people who have never merchanted before I'm going to use a few terms throughout the video which you might want to have a quick understanding of. Now, what I'm going to call an instant buy price is the price of any item that it will instantly buy for in the grand exchange. Now, for example, this might just be a price like 90. And then the instant sell price is the price which the same item will instantly sell for in the grand exchange. So again, this will just be a number. For example, it might be 85. Now, the range is the instant buy price and the instant sell price which is, the, well, the prices that the item is currently being traded for. So for that, the range might be 85 to 90. The margin is the profit per item, which is the instant buy price minus the instant sell price, which for our fictional item would be 5 GP, as 90 minus 85 is 5. And finally, the limit of an item is the amount of it you can buy every four hours. So for some items like logs, it might have a bigger limit than items like Barrow's armor. And just on a quick note about limits, if a limit of an item is 10, if you buy 10 of the item, you wouldn't be able to buy any more for the next four hours. However, if you sold five, you could then buy another five back, which means you're still able to flip constantly throughout the day as long as you're buying and selling the same items over and over. Now you know what merchanting is, you've basically got to pick an item that you think you'll be able to merchant. Now this is where a lot of people struggle, but it really is quite easy. And once you figure out items that can work, you can pretty much, you know, just do them forever really. So 
as long as an item is quite quite um, a popular one in the fact that there will always be people buying and selling them and there's quite a few of them in the game then you know it's going to be an item that you'll be able to buy and sell so what I've did was just drop this little table in paint and I pretty much put the items into three different categories that I think all the items that you might want to merchant would fall under. Now, as you can see, I've got skilling, weapons and armor, and because I couldn't really think of a third category name, just kind of a niche market. Now, I've got advantages and disadvantages listed. For example, skilling are good because they're easy to flip bulk of. It's very easy to buy like 10,000 maple logs, for example, and they're often stable in price which means the prices shouldn't really change while you have them and I don't really want to tempt fate but that implies that it's quite hard to lose money off of these items and you know I can't remember ever really losing a significant amount of money from skilling supplies the disadvantages though is that often not the best profits and it's easy to be undercut and overcut while trading and in case you don't know what that means that means if you're selling an item at 1000 GP on the dot it's a lot easier for someone to undercut you by like 1 GP on an item like those than it is any of the other items. Moving on to the next section, there's also weapons and armor. Now these are typically better profits than scaling supplies and they can include other more profitable methods of merchanting, which for example might be with Barrow's armor you can buy and sell the pieces separately, put them into sets and then try and sell the sets. Things like um, Dragonfire Shields, you could maybe try and buy the Visages, smith them, sell them on the shields. So there is a bit more of a range of different methods you can do with them. However, the disadvantages are that they can change in prices unpredictably. And, you know, it might be quite hard for a new merchant if they're trying to do more expensive items like God Swords. Because, you know, a 50k change in those might be all of your profit gone. And there is lots of competition on items such as whips and those whips are probably the most commonly merged items so if you try and do weapons and armor you've got to kind of think outside the box a little and then for the niche I've pretty much put anything in this which is not really as commonly traded for example Guthix pages a lot of people are gonna want those however you know there isn't that much in supply and there's never going to be that many people buying and selling other things like rares or dragon ornaments just things like that really the advantage is they're often good profits and there's less time required to flip them which means you might only have to update your offer every 10 minutes or something instead of constantly with the skilling supplies and the disadvantage is that you can miss market changes due to fewer trades so you can end up losing money quite easily if you play the market wrong and it's also harder to get into the markets, which means if you're trying to do a merchant for the first time on party hats, you're probably going to lose money until you start to learn how the market behaves and the kind of trends that it does. So now you know the three types of items, you can kind of work your way through skilling supplies, weapons and armor and the niche items to try and find one that you think will work yourself. But if you ever can't think of the, your own item to do, then there is always a backup plan. What I've recommended to a few people, if you're unable to pick an item and you're not really sure, one way you can do it is to go onto the homepage and then on the community drop down if you select the Grand Exchange link, that'll bring you up to just a small part of the website which has a bit of a pricing for every item in the game. If you go on the market movers part and the most traded, if you click on the MAR, that will show you a list of the 100 most commonly traded items for the last 7 days. Now you can see for example that fire runes have sold 956 million in the last 7 days and if you go down you can still see even the least commonly traded of the 100 bronze knives have still sold 10.3 million so any item within this list is obviously going to have a great supply, a great demand and it will be flippable. Now if you're not sure which of these items to do you can find out the margin and that is by instantly buying it, instantly selling it to find the profit on it. And I'm going to do that with a few of the items. So let's go do that now. Now if you've got a few ideas for items that you might want to do, you can check out the margin and the profit you'll make from doing them. 
So for this, you need to go to the Grand Exchange, and for any supplies which are cheap, like security supplies I'm going to do, I recommend to instantly buy and then instantly sell the item. So items I'm just going to pick are uh, just going to be out of nowhere really. I'll just pick, uh, I don't know, magic logs and I'm trying to get that into Camtasia. It's never good. So magic logs, we'll instantly buy one. It buys for 1825 and then instantly selling it, it goes for 1808. So that's 17 GP profit, which is just about 1%, which isn't great for an item, which is a skilling supply. So we're not going to do that one. I recommend doing it if you get to find an item which has around 2 to 5% profit, as they're typically what you're going to be getting at the best. So uh, we'll try a newer, newish item, Polypus 4. Instantly buying one for. No, not even at 52. So these are quite high at the minute. So. Polypus bought. Instantly buy one for 1k and it buys at 54 GP. And it sells at just 47 GP. So you can see there that that is a 7 GP profit, which is really quite good for that item. So that is an item that we will do. So we will offer on more polypore spores. We will offer on, I think the limit for this is 30,000, but I'm not that sure. But that is the amount we'll try and buy at 47 each. And what you can do is when you found an item like this, just to open a notepad document like that, then you can put uh, polypore spore, 47 to 54 and that can just help you remember the item what you're buying it for what you can sell at and You know it just keeps you not so much up to date But if you forget then it's always there just as a bit of a backup and I recommend it if you've never really merged before So another item you might want to do for skilling supplies uh, Okay, no item found that was a fail To spell it out the wrong way. So, Zami Wine used the herbal oil, decent demand for it for range potions. 2598 instant buy, and it will instant sell at 2544. So, that's got about a 2% profit in it, which is decent. So, we can do that one. So, 2544 was the buy price, but because it had a decent margin, we can overcut that price just by 1 GP. So, we'll put 2555 and that just means all of the wines that go into the Grand Exchange will go to us as opposed to the person who had that 2554 offer. That just means that it will speed up our buying and selling of items so that can only only really be good for us. Now we've got two items buying as of yet none of them have bought and this is where depending on the items it can take or it well it can take a while or it can be rather quick so what I'm just going to do, oh, well, we've got quite a lot of those just then, so what you can do now is you can put these back into cell. So you can remember that was 54. So we'll put those in there. And the wines are slowly buying. We'll put these wines back into cell just, just because we can, really. So 2596, two, we'll put them at. And then these should start selling. And you can see these rest of the pipe or spores are bought, which is great for us. So now I can also put these back in. I can merge them with that offer, but I'll just leave them separately as we've got the three GE slots to do so. So putting these at 54 each, and then as you can see, those are already sold, which is 7 GP profit per, so that's about 18k or something, which isn't bad for two minutes' work. So what I will do now is I will just pause the video and come back in maybe five minutes, maybe a bit less, and just see what's happened. So, just going back after about five minutes, you can see most of the polypore spores have now sold, and 2,000 more wines have also bought. So, as we've not sold any wines, just another tip, which I'm going to just say now, 
is if you want to keep yourself up to date with prices, you can always then just, you know, instantly buy another to find out the sell price. So, buying of Zamorak, just again instantly buying one. And you can see it's 2663. So, that means it has actually risen a tiny bit, which means now you can sell it just at med as opposed to 2598 as it was before. So you're actually making an extra 70 GP per, which is just a, a nice little tip which keeps you up to date with prices. And you can see they all sold pretty much instantly. And that's, you know, 140k that we wouldn't have had had we just put them in back at that price. So I'll just take those out and just cancel this offer. And we'll put these in at that price as well. And in another two minutes or so, I will go back onto this screen and we'll just see how much money we make and how long it took. So you can see now after another two or three minutes that all of the wines have sold. So that's about 2,200 wines for roughly 120 GP profit each. So you know that's a good 250k as well as the 7 GP profit on 30,000 spores. So again that's another 210k and that is quite an easy 450k profit in maybe about 10 minutes which would equate to about 2.5 mil an hour and that is with a very very small cash stack. So that is just a pretty much one of the best examples I could show of merchanting skilling supplies and you could see just how slowly for example the wine of Sammy was buying and you know when I saw like 2001 go it did just emphasize the point about buying lots of small individual sellers all of their stock from when they've been training and then you'll have one person who comes along to buy it to train her blow and they'll buy a lot of it quite instantly so for the skilling supplies merchandising demonstration I think that'll be it and now let's move on to the weapons and armor now I've done the skilling supplies it's time to try the weapons and armor now for this you can use the same method that we did for the skin supplies however just got to remember that when you instant buy and then instant sell more of expensive items you are going to lose money while doing it and whilst this is only going to be a small amount of money if you're losing 20k every time you have a test around it will stop it will start to accumulate quite fast so just remember to you know not go overboard with it but it is still the best method of finding out the prices so one item that I'm just going to test for the start will be just an Arim's armor set. So let's buy it as a set, offering to instant buy it, and four nine four nine 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 four. So four nine four nine k, and then instant sell this four seven four eight. It goes for four eight twenty k. And you know that's a three percent profit. That's really quite good. That's what we're after. So we'll buy some more of these. Four eight two one k. And now while these are buying, we'll try and find our other item. So seeing as barrows worked good at the start, we'll just try another one. So we'll try Barax, I guess. Instantly buy it, and then instantly sell it so 2539k and 2485k now that's only 50k profit but it's still decent enough to try so we'll do another one with Verax so 2485 So now while well, those two are buying, I'll just mention, if you do forget the prices and you didn't write them on the notepad like I just haven't, what you can do is you can just check your little item back, Grand Exchange History, then you can bring up your notepad like that, and I might put Arium set was uh, 4820 to 49, 49, and then Ferrax set was... 2485 to 2538 
And again, just to keep yourself up to date with the prices, it does always help if you've got them on hand. So now a couple of those are buying, you can put these back into sell. So remembering that price, putting these back in for 4949 if it stops lagging, so 4949k. The Varax, putting these back in for 2538. As you can see there, a good 130k profit on each of those that sell, about 50k profit on each of those, and you know even though it's using a lot more money, it's you know a lot better profit as well. So you can remember that I made about 450k on the skilling supplies, and on these items alone, you're pretty much going to be equaling that. So you can see the more money you have, obviously it helps, and you know, when you're doing an item like this, then obviously you're going to be making a lot more money. So as the barrack sets are selling, then the barrow's almost doing all right for us. We'll just try a different item. We'll try... I'll see if I can find one while I'm at the Grand Exchange. Because that's a method I've always done before. Just see what people are wearing, and then try and copy that. So... But I don't think we're quite at the level to do Divine Spirit Shields yet, so let's go for that guy there. We'll try a Master Wand. So, Master Wand, instantly buy it as normal, then instantly sell it. So, 1860k. to 1785k so that's got a good profit on it so that's one we'll definitely do so we'll offer on a few of these at 1786k and now the barrack sets have sold so that's great we've got three buy offers so I'll just leave these in for another five minutes or so, see how they do, and then I will start recording again in another, another five minutes. After about five minutes, you can see that the rest of the Varax sets have bought. However, no no other changes have happened with the Arims or even the Master ones. And that is because, like I said previously, the armor and weapons category it isn't traded as, as often as the skilling supplies. So obviously things can take a lot longer. However, with these items, I do suspect that somebody has overcut or undercut us on both of these items. So they will be buying and selling theirs as opposed to ours uh, going through in trades. So we'll just put these Varax sets back into sell. So 2538k for those. And even still with just 10 of those Varax sets, we've still made about a 500k profit which is still more than we made with skin and supplies and you know it just does go to show that even with only 50k profits you can stack up profits quite fast now as these arium sets aren't buying i'm just going to cancel this offer and take it out and i will just put these into sell uh, you know about 15k cheaper is that where they should start selling and we're still going to be in a great profit so we'll put these in at 4934k and hopefully they'll sell and if they do that'll still be a over 100k profit per which is still great and if any of the master ones buy and sell then that'll be an extra profit but if they don't then we'll just cancel those when some of the other barrow sets that's, that we've got are starting to sell so again i'll just start recording in another two to five minutes or so when some more trades have gone through. Now they're pretty much all sold apart from one master one and if you remember the fact that I instant bought and instant sold one at a loss then the profit I made is on two Arium sets 
nine Varax sets and four of the five Master ones. So I made about 240k on the Arims, just under 500k on the Varax and about 250k on the Master ones. So in about 10 or 12 minutes I did come in with a profit of just short of 1 mil which does equate to about 5 mil, 6 mil maybe an hour which is quite good. It can be better but bearing in mind we only used about 30 mil that is a pretty decent profit and yeah it's quite a consistent one as well. So I'll just leave this master wand in to sell and it probably will within about 30 more seconds and the next part you'll see will be starting on the third type of items that you can merchant. So this last market that I'm going to talk to you about is this so-called niche market. Now this is kind of an umbrella term for any item which does have demand however there isn't a lot of supply and you know the small items which not a lot of people are going to be merchanting on so it can have quite a lot of profit however there is that risk with it because these items typically do have small limits and small volume so if anyone was to come into the market with quite a lot of them they could start dropping or equally I mean if someone bought a lot of them and they could also start rising but you would never really be able to predict that so the markets can be quite volatile however once you learn them they can be some of the best profit now they also are traded a lot less which means if you want to do other skills that are away from the Grand Exchange it's a lot easier to merchant items like these while you're going and doing Slayer as opposed to merchanting logs and raw fish or something as they're traded a lot faster so the method for finding these items like I said they kind of want to be rare items that nobody would really think to merchants and the, not, re, not really an easy way to get them and like I showed on the little diagram earlier in the video Guthix pages are possibly an item which might be good to merchant however just for the sake of this video I will just pick a Zamorak page and whilst I'm not going to merchant this just now I am going to show you just how profitable these can be so I do not recommend doing this unless you want to lose a lot of money but just to show you the profit which can happen with some of these items Zamorak page if we buy this say 8 mil then it buys for 8 mil exactly and if we put it in at I don't know 7.3 mil then you can see it doesn't even instant sell which means you can quite easily be making 700k profit per Zamorak page 1 and now you might think that's great you might all go out and try merchant Zamorak pages but maybe 50, 100 of these are traded a day so I mean you aren't going to be making too much money on them however if you're looking to do something overnight it's these kind of markets which can really work to your favour so I'm just going to put this back in at 8 mil so hopefully it'll sell before I go to bed but if it doesn't then I'll have to sell a bit cheaper and while I'm just doing the rest of this video we'll see if we can buy another at about 7.3 just in case you don't know how else you can find out these prices apart from instant buying one you can get a bit of a rough idea for example I was just checking on the forums before and on the treasure trail items although this thread doesn't have any prices you can see on the first page there are quite a few about pages so that one's on about Guthics or Guthics, however you pronounce it. Then ban those pages. And you know, while the forums isn't a concrete source of prices, it can help you out. And it did just tell me that the prices of the pages were overmed. So that was a little bit of a help, I guess. And you know, things like Druidic, that is kind of in this niche market, but I don't really expect any beginner merchant to do that, as it is one of the harder items to merchants. But apart from that, the niche market, I'm not going to go into it too great deal, too great detail, but the items, they're not traded that fast. Once you get into the market, it's really great profit. However, like I did say at the start, one of the big disadvantages, it's hard to find those items. It's hard to get your initial foot in. But once you've 
get a couple of the pages you've got buying and selling offers it can be one of the best markets to be in and it is with rares that I made most of my money and you know merchanting rares is what I will say to most people when they say how do I make all my profit So just as a little overview to flip merchanting, you can do flip merchanting on skilling supplies, barrows armor and this niche market that I have been talking about. They do all have their advantages like I said, however it may depend on the type of merchanting you want to do. If you're merchanting while you know, training at Grand Exchange you might want to do either the armor or even try and find your own little niche market, however if you're just focusing on merchanting you might want to do the skilling supplies and even though the amount of money is kind of like the lower end would be doing skilling supplies the medium amount would be doing armor and the more money you have you could get into the more niche markets that is quite true but you still can do skilling supplies with you know 100 and 200 mil items like chin chompers to buy their limit of 20,000 costs about 35 mil so that is quite a big chunk of money so items like that also can be done with large amounts of money and you know it does depend on whatever suits you and whichever you think you can make the most money with and you've also kind of got to factor in how much time you're playing and the amount of risk you want to take but for flip merchanting I think that is it and the next type of merchanting I'm going to talk about is an investment so I will see you in the next part of the video for investments So now for another type of merchanting you can do, which is investing. Now the difference between flipping and investing is flipping will normally last for maybe 20 minutes you'll have bought and then sold the item on. However, with investments you will often keep an item for a number of days, even weeks, or in the case of items such as rares, possibly even a month. So the investments I'm going to talk about are ones that are considered safe and you know there's a reason for them to actually rise in the future now the reason you do invest in an item is because you think it will rise in price so if you can buy an item for you know 1k each and then sell it on after a while for 2k each then you're going to double your money and for some people the, because there's no work involved that is the way they prefer to merchants so ways that you can find items to invest in is things like the behind the scenes so just looking at this month's behind the scenes you can see that it had a Barrow's graphical rework now given they were changing the armor to make it all look a lot cooler and uh, more up to date as that's what they told us a lot of people would want to buy the armor just to see what it looked like so for that reason obviously short term Barrow's is going to have an increased demand the supply is going to remain somewhat the same so the price should therefore rise so for that reason after you read that the Barrow's graphical rework was coming you could have invested into maybe 10 of each Barrow set and I'm just gonna take a wild stab but most of the armors seem to rose about 20 to 30 percent so if you just bought 10 of each of the armor set which isn't too hard to do if you've got a good cash pile you'd have been making maybe 30 to 40 mil within one or two days spending about 10 minutes of the grand exchange looking at the next update the fire makers curse now it does say 74 fire making however the old requirement was level 90 so seeing it high that's a high requirement of level 90 so lots of people are going to want to buy logs to get that requirement so for that reason you logs magic logs maybe even things like maple logs would rise in price because of the new demand so that could be another item that you could have invested in after reading this month's behind the scenes now if you look at the rest things like the troll war zone and the hattie and skull they're not going to have any massive update onto any items so it's not worth investing with those updates 
So just for the behind the scenes, the options you could have taken would be Barrows, Armour and Logs. Now, as well as the behind the scenes, there are all the future updates which you might know are coming which could affect the price of armour or items or scaling supplies. One example would be the bot bust that they did. So as many of you will be aware that 99% of bots were removed from the game roughly about four, five, six months ago. I can't exactly remember when. And this reduced the amount of supply for all skilling supplies. Now if you just look at this 180 day graph for the red chin chomper, you can see the price was quite stable at 600 and then it went down to maybe 500 because of the bots down to about 400 and then the bot bust came this made the price rise all the way up to 1.8k each which it currently is at now so had you realized the bot bust was uh, coming and apparent you could have invested into supplies like red chin chompers which were heavily botted items invested all your money into that and within maybe two months you would have made four times your original investment. Now with an item like Red Chin Chompers that means if you had 200 mil cash you went all into Red Chin Chompers which would have been really quite easy. You would have been coming out with about 900 mil which is you know over four times your original investment which is just great. Now another way that you can pick an item to invest in is slightly more risky and I wouldn't always recommend it however it can be a, a good way to just find an item so on the RuneScape webpage if you go onto the Grand Exchange section again like I showed you earlier then scroll down but this time market movers and then select price drops this will bring up the list of 100 items that have dropped the most in price within the last seven days now if you just scroll down this list you can find those items and some of them for example like these steel arrows, cadaver berries, they haven't got that much supply and demand so items like those aren't going to be good to invest in. But something like a Sears ring, if you just open that in a new window, you can see that's currently risen, dropped, risen, dropped and whilst it's not a guaranteed investment, it could follow its trends, it could rise up and even if it only rises 10% that's you know an extra 10% on your money that you didn't have and just as a bit of a warning don't watch this video and then go out and invest in Sears rings because I don't want to take the blame if it doesn't work and you know looking down seeds those all seem to have dropped a bit so it may be worth considering something like that but you've got to remember something like a dragon fire shield this is currently dropping because of the barrows update giving visages so will it rise straight after you can't be entirely sure so you've always got to keep your wits about it if you're picking an item like this and for anyone who's merchanting for the first time I really wouldn't recommend this unless you have a bit more experience in flipping or investing in general just as a final example of investments one investment I did which was slightly accidental was with herbs now I did have plans on getting about 100 mil herb lore XP so I spent about 1 bill on herbs and I bought them pretty much at this low point that you can see on the graph I just bought them then because they were cheap it was quite good XP for herb lore training and you know I actually had plans to train however whilst I had them I gained about 15 mil XP and the bot bust did take place now as you can see that made the price rise and I did keep them and I sold them for example the Aventos I sold for about 3.8k or something so I pretty much doubled my money on the Aventos and as well as getting 15 mil Herblow XP I did also make about 600 700 mil profit so that came in at a total of about 1 bill profit if you work out how much I spent on the Herblow XP and that pretty much doubled my money so even though that was accidental I did kind of fluke it and I did also you know time it right because I knew that buying herbal supplies cheap would be great and if I do have footage of that on my old computer I will put a screenshot or something in so you might see that in a second but if you don't I can't find it the 
The hardest part about judging an investment is finding the right price to sell. So I've just drawn up these two random graphs. You've got the price along this side, the time along the bottom. And, you know, it doesn't have to be anything special, this is just an example. But if this was my investment, you can see it's kind of cycling. It's rising, then it's dropping, then it's rising, then it's dropping. And with an item like that, what you'd want to do is buy around this part and sell around this part just as you see the curve starting to lose some height as it rises and starts to level off and you know you can so buy and sell and then when it comes down here then you'd obviously buy again there and sell again there like that and that's more of a cyclical pattern that an item might have such as on the Sears ring and then this is the kind of update influenced item so the behind the scenes that was an awful attempt at a straight line so the behind the scenes might happen like there on that line which makes the item then rise and as you can see it rising you'll obviously want to buy around when the behind the scenes happens and you know you can just see there the rise is starting to level off and become flat so you'll want to sell at around this point now you can constantly find out how well the item's doing if it's just an item like herbs instantly buying one you know every time you go on or something might be a good idea because you're never going to lose money just buying one herb so always keeping yourself up to date on the prices is a great way to make sure that you don't end up losing out as much money as if you just you know logged in after five days and then hope that they'd risen Continuing with my guide full of poorly drawn handmade graphs, what I've just drawn here is a bit of an example of how an item might behave in a day. Now this isn't exactly how the Santa hat did behave, but it's pretty much close enough just for this demonstration. Now within the day, the Santa hat rose roughly about 1.5 mil, and you can see the line showing its average price in green there. So it rose from about 127 mil to about 128.5 mil. However, it didn't do it consistently, as you can see by the black line. Now, if you had an investment of a Santa hat, over the course of the day, you could have made about 1.5 mil profit by holding it. However, if you watched the market and you, and you sold the item at all of these peaks, so if you sold it there, sold it there, there, and there, as well as rebuying it, on the green sections there, there, there and finally there as well as making the 1.5 mil profit from your investment you could also make maybe 300k, 500k, 500k, 500k so as well as making your 1.5 mil profit on the item you could also have gained an extra 1.5 mil cash and that's just an easy example with one Santa hat if you're extremely rich and you've got, well, there's people out there with 20 Santa hats as, as, as an investment, then they're able to easily make a lot more money throughout the day by just selling and buying their stock as they go. And that's just a handy way that you can also generate more cash while you, you've got an item that you're investing in. Now, to finish off with investments, it's safe to say investments are one of the best ways to make money with very little effort. They can turn 100 mil into 150 mil, 200 mil into 300 mil, 1 bill into 2 bill and you know most of the time if you're able to find items well you can pretty much guarantee the profit. However with great rewards does come the risk. If you pick the items wrong you could end up buying items which are going to continue to drop. You could also keep for them for too long miss out on profits and then have to sell them for you know still at a profit but not as much as you could do and you've also got to compare it is making two mil profit on a 10 mil investment over a week worth it when you could make that much in a few hours flipping and it depends again on how much time you want to invest the amount of money you have and the amount of risk you want to take now personally the only investments I really do or with rares and whilst rares can be great they can also drop quite rapidly and 
even with quite a bit of experience in the rares market I can still lose out quite a lot however you know I do also make that money back within a few days of losing it but it's just always worth knowing that you can lose quite a lot of money if you do play it wrong so you know unless you think the item's got a genuine reason to rise such as behind the scenes don't just jump into the market and go head first because it might go badly but just as my personal opinion on investing I would say after you have some experience with some items and you've done some flipping try and find you know one or two items which start with a bit of a cyclical rise and drop pattern see if you can invest into those and then if that goes well then try it on a behind the scenes item or maybe on an item from the GE database the last type of merchanting I'm going to talk about in this video is what I like to call bulk purchasing and now bulk purchasing is really quite a simple concept and I'm going to explain it in two ways now the first way is just one way that isn't strictly the same however you know it's the same concept and you'll all be aware of it and this is just when you're like at the Grand Exchange someone follows you and says look I'm trying to elk air battle staffs could you buy me 100 because I've bought my limit and the reason he asks that is because the Grand Exchange limit is smaller than the amount he needs to buy for his skilling now on the other hand you can also buy the limit to sell to people which I'm going to show you now so on the forums just this thread of selling battle staves this guy Adam Keller had this thread up for quite a while now for three months or so and he's selling these battle staves at 8.5k each and you can see he has managed to have been selling some so you may think how is this guy making profit if he's just got a forum thread and the point is the battle staves are only worth about 7.7k each so he's really making about 10% profit on each one he sells and you may think why is he able to sell them at those price other people who just buy them not aware of the price and no the reason is because he has a lot of the supply so if people want to train crafting with battle staves instead of waiting maybe 5 days to buy 3000 via their own grand exchange they'll spend that bit more money to buy them all instantly so they can train all the crafting in one day so just another example of this bulk purchasing which is quite relevant to me is with broad arrows now I'm sure anyone who's seen my bank video has noticed I have about 8.4 million broad arrows and that is all from fletching and to buy that amount of supplies would take me well it's 60,000 a day so buying those would take me about 140 days and if you want all the supplies at the start which quite a lot of people do when they're going for you know 99s and 200 mil xps it can be quite annoying if you have to wait all that time before you can start so for that reason they might wish to buy them from players instead so just looking at this thread on the forums broad arrow supplies he's got 12 mil broadheads and 12 mil headless arrows now that is enough to get you about 180 mil xp and you can see he's selling quite a lot and at one point he did even sell out and he's able to sell quite a lot of these in bulk now typically you do normally make about 10% profit on items like these for example when I got the fletching I would be buying maybe arrowheads for 110 each when the G price was 95 to 100 and it didn't really cost much more on my end however the people who were selling with them were making very easy profits and all this method really consists of is you just having buy offers for commonly used skilling supplies in your grand exchange collecting quite a few of them and then going on the forums and selling them to the people who actually need them for the skilling now the best way to find items that you can do this with is from my experience going onto the forums checking things like the crafting forum the herbal forum and you know things like that seeing which items people are wanting to buy lots of and find the average prices so say if you go onto the fletching forum and you find people are trying to buy feathers for 20 each you know if you buy any at 15 gp each you'll make a decent profit on them given it's just an offer that you might leave in you know while you're doing lots of work for a week at college or something and these offers are just intended to be left in 
while things buy you'll sell them once you get a decent amount so say if you buy 15,000 of those raw summer pies you then might go onto the forums put them up to sell and then as those are selling you'll have more buying and it kind of continues as a well continuous process so I wouldn't recommend just copying these items and definitely not the prices because I just made those up and none of them will buy at those prices however if you just find items that you think will work items which you think have got a decent enough profit on them you can just pretty much apply this situation to them by offering for quite a lot of them at a price that you think you make a good enough profit at so just to assume frost dragon bones say you could sell those for 18.5k you can maybe make 700k on a frost dragon bone limit maybe 300k on a raw summer pie limit you're making one mil there alone then feathers maybe you could make 150k in a day and bearing in mind that's using hardly any money at all then broad arrowheads maybe another 600k a day uncut diamonds I'm not too sure anything between 500k a day and bearing in mind uncut diamonds are free to play as well there are free to play items like this and battle staves again maybe another 500k which doesn't sound much compared to the other things I've been talking about but if you're just leaving those in the grand exchange going away on holiday or something this might be a quite a nice idea just to have a nice little cash boost for when you come back home the only problem with this is if you have a lot of an item like this it could also be affected by the prices of other items and other updates so just as a cautionary note if you've got 10 mil in I don't know uncut diamonds and then uncut rubies start to crash horribly for some reason uncut diamonds may then start to follow with that downward turn and you may lose money so it isn't completely foolproof and you can still lose money with it it isn't risk free but it is a very easy way of making money by just having offers in your grand exchange and letting other people take advantage of your limit for a bit of a profit just on a final note about this bulk purchasing if everyone who watched this video attempted to do it then the amount of supply on the forums would overwhelm the amount of people wanting to buy and so it wouldn't work so just as a tiny bit of a warning I would only recommend this if you know for sure that the item you are planning on doing has not got much other competition for example if you see like eight other people trying to sell feathers I wouldn't really recommend trying to buy your own feathers to sell on the forums as you're probably going to be outsold and undercut by the other merchants who've got more experience in it so that's just a bit of a final warning only really try and do it with items that you know you can sell at a profit and now just to finish off the video I just want to have a few closing comments first is that there'll be a few people who say that I've ruined merchanting or I've ruined their items because of this video and I do appreciate that in the short term a few of the items that I've mentioned specifically may be a bit worse to merchant because of you know a bit more of competition on them however saying that I've ruined merchanting is a bit naive and you know the amount of items that you can merch does greatly outnumber the amount of people who are merchanting so anyone who says I've ruined merchanting I mean there are a lot of other items so ruined it I don't think I have and the amount of people I've helped will you know amazingly outnumber the amount of people who I've hindered so apart from that there are uh, just a few annotations on screen one of them is a link to Castle Wars's merchanting series now in that he just does a few merchants with small amounts of cash ranging up to larger amounts and again you know if you've not got much experience something like that may help you it may show you a few different items which I haven't mentioned a few other techniques and it's always nice to get the same idea but from another person's perspective so that's on screen now and in addition to that there is also a link to my next armor merchanting video which you know you may want to have a look at that and see how much I can make with a large amount of money and that will also be on screen in case you want to have a go at attempting that yourself and apart from that I hope you guys have enjoyed the video and learned something and if you think it's helped you it would be great if you could help me in return by 
dropping me either a like or a favourite as I really do appreciate that and it does let me know that I've done a good job. So all that being said, if you did enjoy this guide then if you could leave me some feedback that would be great. If you did watch it all then again if you could tell me that would be awesome. And apart from that I hope all your merchanting goes well. If you've made money from this guide then feel free to tell me how much. And I think that is it for the video guys. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you again in the next video.